Welcome back to another episode of Design Today. I'm Dylan Winspear, and on the episode today, we have my guest, Jordan Reading, who has been through a handful of experiences recently. And I'll tell you what, they haven't all been enjoyable. Have you ever been laid off? It's not fun. I've been there myself, and I know many others who have as well. Uh, And it's not an experience I would wish upon somebody, but it is one we can all grow from. Oftentimes, we think getting laid off is like the scarlet mark against us. But let me tell you, it's how you respond to it that's going to be even more powerful throughout the rest of your career. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So let's get started. What's up? Thanks for joining me on Design Today. I'm excited. Good, good. This is awesome. I'm glad you wore your yeah. Buffalo Bills hat. I know. Too. I didn't even think about that. It's like your trademark at this point in time. It kind of is. And I'm like, so people always ask me, tell me one like unbelievable fact about you. And I always tell them I'm a Bills fan and they go, why is that unbelievable? And I'm sorry, Bills Mafia, but it's really unbelievable that any that the Bills have fans uh-huh. in a sense. Sorry. Oh, they're going to come at me with bitch well, words. <laughs> I don't know. I, I mean, most of them are brain damage from all their ta- table. <laughs> so at this point in time. All the all this. Have you seen the video of the baby doing no. it? There is somebody took their baby and wrapped it up and just gently made it smash it. Oh, my gosh. Of course they do. <laughs> it's hilarious. Only with the Bills Mafia. Yeah. Well, that's what happens when the majority of your population is Polish and Irish. So they've got nothing else to do. But they've got drink and nothing to do. Yep. That's funny. <laughs> um, you're obviously a Bills fan because you're from New York. Yes. Born yeah. and raised. Uh, yeah. Born and raised. If you couldn't tell, you can't like bagel. <laughs> <laughs> is it flag as well? F- flag. How do I say it? How do you flag. Say it? Flag. 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 I think. Yeah. Sassy flag. flag. That's more Canadian. Flag. Bag. Tag. Flag. Never, never really. I, well, I'll tell you one thing that all people always point out to me. I call. It's the 15. It's not I-15. It's the 15. the 15. That's a New York thing to do. Mm-hmm. And people call me out on it all the time. That's funny. Mm-hmm. Uh, give us a little bit of background about yeah. how you got into UX sure. and how you got the position that you're at today. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> I originally started in graphic design. I'm uh-huh. sure that's relatable to like a ton of people. Right. Uh, visual. I'm like, visual design. Yeah. Woo. Uh, but then I eventually met a woman who did UX research uh, for Getty Images. And I was like, okay, you got to tell me more about your job. So she told me a little bit more about what she did. Mm -hmm. And she told me about IDEO. And I I was like, oh, okay. So I went online and I was reading up all about them and I looked at their design methods. I'm like, this is cool. (laughs) They're doing like service design style stuff. And it was like, What you're kind of taught to, okay, when you're doing graphic design, you consider your client and you research what they need. It's like that, but at a bigger, broader scale, it's more holistic. So I'm like, I'm going to go back to school. (laughs) And sure enough, I went back to school for interaction design and I ended up uh, RIT in Rochester. Okay. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it. Some people, there's a few RIT alum floating around in Salt oh, Lake. Cool. Um, I haven't connected with them. If you are, connect with me. There you go. Yeah. Uh, um, or a Bills fan. If you're a Bills fan, let me know. I'm going to edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> um, but anyways, uh, let's see. Where did I leave off? Um, I ended went up. back to school. Yeah, I went, went back to school. I worked for a little bit out there. And I'm like... I don't want to be in New York anymore. Mm -hmm. So I ended up coming out to Utah to work a UX job. And then I've been kind of floating around trying to find like the perfect place. Mm -hmm. And I thought I had. (laughs) And then I hadn't, (laughs) which we'll talk about. Which will be the topic of your conversation (laughs) today. Yes. And then, which was an amazing culture. So it was one of the top things that I wanted to make sure I found in my new position at Podium. Mm-hmm. Woo. Real ex- oh. 
I'm just so in love with them too right now. Shameless plugs are totally okay. Yeah, I am totally in love. I yeah. won't lie. I've been so happy to like that my journey has brought me there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's going to be something we'll talk about yeah. as well because mm-hmm. I, I do think that's cool that you found that yeah. through all of this. Yeah. So podium, woo. <laughs> awesome. So I guess let's get a starting point here yeah. in our conversation. When was it that you got laid off? So let's see. I got laid off um, March. I had just started. So it was just a really, it was a series of fortunate but unfortunate events. Yep. Um, I had left my job to go to a new job mm-hmm. and I was there. I was pretty fresh. I was new at this company. How for new? Now. Two months. Oh, really? Yeah, I had been there for two months and was just really falling in love with the problems. And I had already fallen in love with the designers and the design team and my like the engineers I was going to get to work with. So it made it extra painful, (laughs) all of that. So I was two months in and then like the beginning of March. Yeah, that sounds right. I should know this date, (laughs) but I don't. Um, I was laid off because of you know unfortunate circumstances Mm -hmm. and it was at first I thought it would be devastating but it was kind of nice because the design team they all took us out all the designers that got laid off that Mm -hmm. day they all took us out to lunch and kind of helped us through that initial shock yeah and then I went home and I'm like I expected to be crying I told my husband and he's like you're not sad. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, should I be? <laughs> you know, it's funny because I'm glad you're, you're talking yeah. a bit about this because even the title of like, I was laid off. Mm. I think a lot of people look at like, yeah, you know, that's a scarlet mark against you, right? Yeah. So you, How do you never talk be through that? that down. Mm-hmm. How do you go into in your next interview saying I was laid off? Mm-hmm. Like, then you have to immediately go into like, well, it wasn't my fault. Like, yeah. it wasn't. And then you look defensive. You don't want to do that. Mm-hmm. In interview. I mean, so it's like you think you carried this mark of I've been laid off throughout the rest of your career. Yeah. But it's funny. And I think I've learned this through an experience that I've had. You I think when we were talking on the phone, you've seen this as well. Mm-hmm. It happens to more people than we want to admit Mm -hmm. it's kind of a part of your of a career experience so many people when i've started talking to everyone they're like oh yeah i was laid off three four times Mm -hmm. and i'm like what Mm -hmm. (laughs) so now i'm just like this is people understand this and it kind of makes you feel better yeah because it's you just know everyone can relate. Yeah. So like just talking about it was really nice to like hear. <laughs> it's, a, it, it's immediately kind of a devastating mm. experience. The, mm. the first time you ever go, go through that, you know, I've been laid off. It, mm. It's a scary experience. Yeah. Especially if you got people who are dependent on you, you're going like, oh, shoot, how do I pay the bills now? Mm-hmm. Right. And not the bills mafia, but how do not I pay the bills my, mafia. how do I pay my <laughs> physical bills? Yeah. How do I stay in my house? How do I make yeah. sure I don't put my family on my on the street? Um It was about three years ago that I was laid off. In fact, (laughs) yeah, this summer will be three years from when I was laid off. Wow. And it was um, a startup that I was at that just sudden closed doors. Mm. And I remember it just kind of like a a flash, so unexpected. No one saw it coming from a mile away. We went into work on it. And I shared the story with you on the phone, but just to (laughs) recap real quick. I went into the office on a Monday morning with the intention of just being there for a couple hours. I was actually on PTO that whole week. I was going camping. I was going to be out of cell service, away from technology. And my intention was just to go in for a couple hours, check in on my team Mm -hmm. and make sure everyone was set for me to be gone. And right as I was about to walk out of the office, everything was good. Uh, The CEO said, hold up. We'd like to get everyone into our conference room. So it's just kind of like, you know, not irked, but I'm just like, come on, really? You knew I had to go. All right, fine. I'm going to the conference room. And walk into the conference room, he sits down. One of the first things he says is, uh, we're closing doors oh. and you can <laughs> grab your stuff and head home. And then he goes on to explain kind of the severance and that kind of stuff. Oh. And my, my jaw just hit the table. And I'm just like, what does that mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I, I haven't been through this before. Like, grab my stuff and go home like that you're asking me to like pack up three years worth of work and just mm-hmm. leave and then just go okay yeah i guess that's that yeah mm-hmm. you know it's yeah. just kind of like what your hands of it yeah we're done mm-hmm. and there's nothing we can do about yeah. it and i remember getting in the car driving home and i called my wife and i said that's <laughs> it 
I'm coming home. I'm done. And she was like, in her mind, she's thinking, yeah, you're going camping. You're, so she says like, yep, that's it. You're going camping. I was like, no, I'm done. She's like, yeah, you're done. I was like, no, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> I'm not going back. And you know, they're closing doors. And it was like one of those things where I felt like in my mind, I was like, I just failed my wife. I failed my kids. Mm. And that scarlet mark of like, I screwed up really kind of got to me. And it's taken me a couple years. I I was not interested in getting back into the startup world because I was so scared of that ever happening. Again. I can totally relate to that feeling. Too, right? right? You now. just you're mm-hmm. just don't make me go through that again. Yeah. But I've recognized that it happens mm-hmm. uh, beyond your control. Sometimes it just happens, and it's not this scarlet mark that I think we think it probably we think is it is be. like how you you kind of grew up. At least I know I did. I grew up in a, an area where if you got laid off. That was pretty bad right? because there were no other jobs. And if you late got laid off, you did something pretty terrible. Well, it, it probably even, that's a great point. It yeah. probably even goes back to the fact that like my dad, I think, worked for one company for like 20 years oh, worked yeah. for another company like for 15 years. And it's like, no, you held jobs for that long. Yeah. And if you don't hold a job for that long, you messed up. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and knowing that oh, that was only like a two and a half, three year stint. I messed up. Yeah. But it happens, right? I had that I had that worry about like constantly moving, like and trying to find that perfect kind mm-hmm. of place. I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, I can't I can't be hopping around and no one wants to hop around, but right. they want to find the right fit for right. them. And that was part of the thing when I got laid off. I thought I had found that and I had so when I went through the process, I'm like, I have to find this stuff. Uh, because I don't want a job hop. Because yeah, <laughs> it's like you want to have that lengthy period of time, but like kind of like what your parents did, but it's not going to happen. There's yep. no one like no one. I don't know anybody that's been in a job for longer than five, 10 years tops. 10 years is a long time. Yep. too. Yep. My, my mom was in a job for like 35 years. Yep. So it's like I'll never reach 35 years at one place. And I think that would be a miracle. <laughs> sure. No, I totally get it. Totally Especially get it. if uh, the world of startups. <laughs> yeah. It's just not really how, how yeah. culture or company culture works today. Yeah. It's, it, you don't see people sticking around for that long. Um, um, so the age old adage of it's not about getting knocked down, it's about getting back up. Yeah. You yeah. learned a lesson in that process. I did. I learned a few, I feel like. <laughs> so why don't you talk to me a little bit about yeah. what you learned about getting back up after these events? So I feel like the biggest thing that like I shouldn't say the biggest thing. The biggest thing actually was the Utah community. I learned how awesome they are and how valuable all the, I think I've been here for three, three years, I think. Sounds right. Time, Mm -hmm. time gets away from me. Mm -hmm. Three years. Sounds right though. Um, Three years. I remember I had a colleague say to me, you need to sign up for product hive. Mm -hmm. And I go, Oh, okay. So I signed up for it and I go, yeah, I don't know. And then because it was it just seemed like it just a bunch of people talking. And then I discovered the meetups and I started to network a little bit. And it's funny because he told me to sign up for it because he's like, if you ever lose your job, you'll need this network. Mm-hmm. And at the time I was like, nah, I don't know. I can do it on my own. Yeah, I that's kind of how I felt. And that network really came through yeah. when the layoff happened. And I think that's partly why when I came home that day and I walked in the door and I told my husband and he expected me to be so upset real like upset i'm like i can't do anything about it right (laughs) all i can do is try to keep moving forward right so i just remember getting on my computer that day and opening up slack and i had tons of messages which is insane i wouldn't have had that had i not been a part of that community or that network and i started i'm like oh gosh i have to update my resume Mm -hmm. (laughs) so lesson number one always have an updated resume be ready with that be ready (laughs) because i did not i i opened up my old mac imac computer that was from 2011 because i always used my work computer Uh to like for everything i never had a personal device and i'm like Oh, crud. <laughs> so I had to update all my Adobe programs. Oh, 
months and I had to open, find my resume file and mm -hmm. then I couldn't find the latest version. So I had to find an old one and update it. And that took longer. So this process of like getting my resume out that day with like the, the big whirlwind of messages, uh, cause I wanted to act fast. Sure. And it's like you, I know people that waited the weekend and they wish they hadn't. Oh really? Yeah. Like they were like, I shouldn't have taken the weekend off. <laughs> Because really? they were, there were people, I had designer friends that were like, they already had interviews that, that afternoon. Oh, and geez. I'm like, wow, you are hardcore. Like, yeah. I don't even have a resume ready to yeah. hand out. So advice number one, always have a resume uh -huh. and <laughs> always have some kind of personal device. Yep. I will never not have those two things your own, again. Yeah. Your own mm -hmm. setup. That makes yeah. sense. What was your portfolio like? So my portfolio, I had a, I have a website. Mm -hmm. It's kind of tough because the job I had previously was a year's worth of work that never really, that was in the process of getting sure. road mapped out and built. So it was all under NDA. Mm -hmm. couldn't show it so yet. I couldn't really publish it. It yep. wasn't published work yet. Yep. So I had a couple projects on my website that I would point people to, but ultimately what I ended up doing during interviews is just presenting a case study, sure. which I've been talking to Patrick about doing a lunch UX for it. Mm -hmm. So maybe uh, how to write a case study. Sure. Thinking about calling it story time with Jordan. Cool. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> which is really all about like having a story, one story. And, um, some of our designers that a couple of designers that also got let go, they, they were a little, they, I don't want to say a little more junior. They were probably junior and mid designers, but they were like panicking about getting their portfolio together. Yeah. <laughs> so I was trying to tell them like, just get, get something simple, some simple like samples that you can send out yeah. and then focus on building out a couple of those case studies. Yep. You don't have to, it's not the quantity, it's the quality. Right. So that's, that's how my, like how I approach the portfolio yep. because I wanted to make sure I was able to talk about what I had been working on the last year. Makes total sense. <laughs> yeah. So my portfolio wasn't terrible. I don't think. Oh gosh. <laughs> so how many people do you think reached out to you in those days after? Um, I feel like this is an odd kind of case. This isn't normal, sure. <laughs> but I had LinkedIn messages, Slack messages. Oh gosh. LinkedIn was like just constantly scrolling from people trying to like, oh, our company's hiring. You should look here, here and here. Some of them were um, just work like other designers saying you should t talk to this person. Yeah. Or, and a lot of it were a lot of them were similar leads. Yeah. Um, but it was amazing to see how many people were like trying to like connect help, yeah. and help uh, everyone in the community. I know even people that didn't get laid off were getting bombarded with messages. Really? <laughs> yeah. And then all like my director, uh, I think, yeah, I think that's his title. I'm sorry if it's not, <laughs> but my director at the time was even pushing people towards us. So we had just all these channels like coming in of, it was overwhelming, but in sure. a good way. <laughs> and I made it a point to always like, at least I tried if I missed anyone, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm well-intentioned, well-intentioned, but if I miss someone, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I made it, I tried to make it a point to respond to everybody yeah. because it was, even if it was like something I had already heard about, it's like, thank you. Yep. <laughs> I really appreciate it because yep. it was a great way to connect with people. Meet people. Yeah. So I, I don't know. It was about two weeks of full-time work responding work mm -hmm. it was insane i mean yeah. from from a third party perspective watching it all go down in the community i was just blown away by the response yeah. of just the tech community here in utah <laughs> the response was unlike anything i'd ever seen yeah it was just, I mean, because you weren't the only person affected by the layoff. No. There was a good portion of employees that were laid off in the process as well. Yeah. I mean, it was kind of, it was news in the tech community. Yeah. Uh, but the reaction was, I mean, I would see posts um, from you or others in the same situation. And there'd be 50 to 100 comments mm -hmm. uh, in that post with just leads leads nonstop and trying to follow Unreal. up on all of them it was it's like i love this problem <laughs> but it was like and most places wouldn't have that yeah. if that happened in any other environment i feel like it'd just be like eh, 
whatever. You know, again, from a third party perspective, it was almost like a feeding frenzy too, because at Domo, yeah. we were in the process of hiring and I was just like, yeah. a lot of talent just hit the marketplace mm -hmm. needing work. We need to jump on this quickly. Yeah. And so I reached out to a handful of candidates, yourself included. Yeah. And, you know, there's a couple who are I, I didn't hear back from because I know that they were just bombarded, bombarded with messages. With, mm -hmm. So I didn't take it personally. Maybe I should. <laughs> Maybe they intended to be personal, but I didn't take no, it personally. No, I'm sure they didn't. I just know yeah. that they were bombarded. Yeah. And there was so much, uh, I guess, it, uh, need, want, desire to get talent of, of, of your caliber into different places that, I don't know, it was just, it was a really cool thing to watch. It, it, it was a cool thing to be a part of. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it was overwhelming to be a part of it because you don't, you don't want to drop the ball on anybody. I, I think yeah. that actually also then maybe represents a little bit of the culture that was at the, at your place of previous work, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the team, the, mm -hmm. the, the, bond the friendship i mean everyone had each other's backs and that's a culture that you really want yeah. to find i even had somebody reach out to me who was referred to by our ceo like he was even pushing like saying these are all the employees i let go like yeah. if you need people and that is like very cool who gets referred by a ceo right. <laughs> that is amazing right so it's it, it was a special type of thing to be a part of <laughs> so you mentioned one word when we were talking on the phone this idea of hustling yeah that once once you were let go you learned something about mm -hmm. hustling it felt like a hustle it like, felt like a hustle <laughs> you, you not only had two weeks of full-time messages to respond to and a resume to get through mm -hmm. but tell me more about this hustle yeah. you discovered so basically i feel like it was a hustle of getting to know people. Uh -huh. It was a hustle of managing your time uh -huh. <laughs> quite a bit. Um, I would take, I, I can't even remember. I would take and answer messages on the weekend. I'd start developing my case that weekend. I started to develop my case study. I spent yep. Saturday and Sunday building it. And then it was a full-time job times two, just doing it all. Isn't that crazy? It was insane. And then everyone's like, oh, you must have enjoyed your vacation. Yeah, did you binge watch Game of Thrones? It's like, no, I, I maybe had two days to relax yeah. of downtime. But like, it was full time hustle because it's from like Monday to Friday and even after hours, after hours, you'd be messaging people. And then during the day, you'd be taking phone calls or going on interviews and then just trying to be as transparent with everyone as possible about what's going on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was really um that's I hope hustle doesn't come off as a bad word because no. <laughs> it's like hustle. Like you're not hustling people, but you're hustling yourself. Yeah. yeah and that's the physical, more athletic <sighs> type of way of like you've got to bust your butt to get out. Exactly. There and make it yeah. And that's that's what it was. It was I was taking I don't know. I even went and talked to people that weren't even hiring. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I literally talked to everybody and yep. went in and saw everybody that I could and fit in. And at the time, oh. At the time, also, I had some personal issues with my dad where I had to go back to New York for two mm -hmm. days. So I had to like hustle. Like I was trying to arrange video chat parts of the interviews yep. on days I was in New York. Yep. So I'm trying to manage all that time and yep. squeeze things in and telling people when I was talking to them about that situation in conjunction to the situation I was living in yeah. Utah it was people also were really great about that part too and being flexible and it just it, the community has been awesome about it. That's really cool. Yeah. So, uh, the hustle was, <laughs> Yeah. no, I, we talked, I, yeah. it was one morning when I was driving up to Salt Lake and I think you were in New York when we were talking, uh, maybe, it, or you just the days are blurring together, I bet they were, I bet they were. <laughs> but you could just tell that when when you and I were talking, and this was about the opportunity of, at Domo, you had a yeah. couple questions. Were you asking those questions with everyone? Oh yeah, yeah. It was. It's kind of funny because I I had learned from going from place to place about what I liked and didn't like. Tell me about. Well, for those yeah. who are listening, what were those questions? Yeah. What were so, you specifically oh gosh, in? you're gonna make me go back in my brain right now. Um, you have them word for word, but yeah. what really stuck out in your mind? So. So I was really looking at team culture. Mm -hmm. I wanted to see how the design 
designers were working with each other right. and how closely they were working with each other. That was kind of a big thing on my list of things that I thought was nice and also led to successful teams. Yeah. Um, so that was a big thing. And then also their leadership, having that leadership structure from the top down was really important to me too, because it can get very frustrating when <laughs> you have like this level of at the leadership where they just don't see the value in what you're doing. Yeah. And they kind of look at you as just a pixel pusher. Sure. And you can do so much more than that. Sure. Right. So that was really important to me is to have that structure um, as well as the autonomy. So those were like the three big things. And when I say autonomy, I don't mean teams just go off and do whatever they want. There's a vision, a shared mm -hmm. vision across the company, but they're given like the trust to do their yeah. jobs. Yeah. So those were like the three big things that I was really looking at. When you got on the phone with recruiters or hiring managers, where it was, did you yeah. feel like when you asked those questions, they were trying to sell you on oh, why they're the right fit? Recruiters were very very much like that. I think the directors were a little less like that. How did you see through, like, I don't want to call it the BS, yeah. but how, how did you see through, like, this person's telling something authentic and this sounds like I'm yeah. getting sale? Ooh, so, how did sold. I? I uh, honestly, it was hard to do it on the phone, mm -hmm. but when I would go into like actual places, you could tell, you could mm -hmm. hear it, you could feel it. Um, I was telling someone, this is kind of a woman's thing. I was going into like some of the women's bathrooms just yeah. to see like what they were like, mm -hmm. um, if they were used, if there was like feminine, feminine, uh, things in there for them, like accommodating, mm -hmm. like it kind of tells you a lot about, mm -hmm. uh, uh, culture yeah. <laughs> in yeah. a sense so like you can pick up on these little things and that's how you kind of can see oh yeah we're diverse mm, well there's no women in your bathroom so <laughs> i don't know how true that is yep. it was funny i just had a designer point out to me i was like did you know that there's hairspray and hair products in our bathrooms and i was like i yeah. never picked up on it because i wouldn't even know what to look for yeah. but next time i went in i was like oh yeah, yeah. there are <laughs> that's interesting it's a, such a small thing that uh -huh can make such a big difference sure. and that those were the types of things that i was looking and just hearing like uh like what was it there was one question i was asking people later on in the interview it was like when was the last time you went on vacation was another one because mm -hmm. that's a good one to ask it's like are they working people hardcore to the bone yeah. but telling you you have uh, unlimited PTO right. and no one takes it. Right. So there's there was stuff like that, like that I would kind of sneak in there to try and sift through it. Yeah. So I think these are good yeah. lessons for to point out for those who are in not necessarily yeah. in a scenario where they're laid off and they're looking for new work, but anytime you're looking for new work, Absolutely. identify what it is that's important to you mm -hmm. and then be prepared that someone's going to try and sell you on why it's right fit. And you do have to kind of sniff you have out to what's the truth. Listen, I mean, we should be doing that as UX designers anyways. Right. We should be naturally good at yes, that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's like reading between the lines is yeah. our job yeah. in a sense. Yep. So it's like if you can't pick that, like read between those lines and see what what's really happening, mm -hmm. then eh, maybe you just need to take that job and learn that lesson. Yeah. <laughs> but that I learned a I've fallen into that trap a couple of times. Well, and I think just as important, yeah. as, and you, you're talking to this point, just mm -hmm. as important it was for uh, the employers to vet you in the hiring process, mm -hmm. you were really vetting the company. Absolutely, yeah. And I, I would like to think that most people, when they're job searching, they're not looking at one company and just mm -hmm. saying, make me an offer or else I'm never going to have work. You, yeah. Hopefully you're looking at multiple opportunities. And then you have to do your part to vet out if you are going to be happy there, mm -hmm. if you're going to be the right fit. And I like how you had your values of what meant most to you. Yeah. Yeah. And you were trying to figure out, am I going to find those values at these companies? It's tempting in those situations to be like, I don't have that luxury. I need to take the first person that will give me a job. Yeah. I get it. Sometimes you're going to be in that circumstance, maybe early in your career when you're just trying to get experience. But as it goes, you really need to figure out what's important mm -hmm. uh, so that, you know, your long term happiness, your long term satisfaction at your employer is is. You know, yeah. fulfilling. And something might seem like, I know when I, the very first job I ever took, it was, I thought something was important to me, but like 
it wasn't that important once I started to live it. Yeah. And I'm like, mm, I don't know <laughs> about yeah. this. So, I mean, you, you learned, yeah. right? So that was that I, that's why I had to go through a couple places to figure that out. Um, every place taught me something different yeah. and I've learned from it all. And I, I, that's all experience. And yeah. now I get to take that. There's, there's very few times where I've been more stressed out than when I'm job hunting. Oh yeah. Because you, think like this there's this luxury of like take it mm-hmm. easy you know you can you can figure it out slowly you don't have to rush into it and granted i think there's truth to that but at the same time you're like the the mental weight of mm-hmm. trying to make the decision is so heavy yeah and then let's say you do get an offer one on the table and you're like how long can i have them hold on mm-hmm. so that i can find something else to compare it to yeah because i don't want to say no and then not get something better. I don't want to say yes just because I need to say yes. Like yeah. there's a balancing act there. It's a difficult situation to be in. I think it weighs heavy. Oh yeah. And there were nights I was so I was not sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> it was terrible. Like I'd go lay up in bed and I'm like, oh gosh, I have to make all these decisions. And it's like like I had an offer and it's like, I loved everybody that I met, but then there were other factors like location that I'm like, do I really want to, do I want to do this to myself and drive this far every day? Right. What's that going to wear and tear on me daily going to yep. do? It's like, so there were so many, even those good opportunities. Yep. It's like physically, can I do this? It's going to take more time away yep. from me being from home. So there's all, all these different factors that yep. go into it. And you got to figure out what's important. Yeah. To you. You know, again, you're talking about those factors. One of them that I was, uh, when, when I was let go, I was commuting about 30 minutes a day, mm-hmm. which isn't insane. I mean, especially no. when you compare it to you know, people who are living in LA or bigger cities. Oh gosh, right? I it, know. I get, it's worse. <laughs> 30 minutes to me was like, I spent an hour a day in the car. Like, that's such a waste of time. Mm-hmm. And when I started working at Domo, Domo was legitimately six minutes from my driveway oh, to the nice. parking lot. Oh, nice. You would think. <laughs> I thought that a close commute is what I wanted. Yeah. I really do like having 15 minutes in the car each way. To decompress. Decompress yeah. is important to me. More uh-huh. important to me than uh, a short commute. Mm-hmm. Because I, if I just go from a meeting where it, Maybe got a little bit hot and I'm home in six <laughs> minutes. Guess what? I'm still hot in six minutes. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't like bringing that home. And so it is not uncommon for me to sit in my driveway or to sit in the parking lot before I leave to try and decompress, to try and meditate before I walk into the house. I thought I wanted a five minute commute. I ended up learning I don't See, really want a five minute Something commute. that you thought was important. Yep. So I think you go, you learn yep. these things, you understand what is important, what's not important. If it's autonomy that's important to you, yeah. what does that mean? Mm. Like what type of autonomy? Economy, do you mean yeah are you and you mentioned this earlier yep. are you wanting just to be able to do whatever the heck mm-hmm. you want because uh, yeah that does sound dreamy that's definitely one of the questions like so I've been told that teams have autonomy in terms of that they're trusted to do. Well, it's because no jobs, recruiter's ever going to say, yeah. no, we don't have autonomy. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, you don't need to get all this red tape approval. Exactly. <laughs> Nobody's going to say that. Uh, yeah. No hiring manager will say that because that's not attractive to anyone. So yeah. everyone will tell you, we've got full autonomy. Yeah. What does that mean? Yeah. To me, what it means is I can be given a like a direction. There is somebody in a leadership position that's saying, these are our goals. This is the direction that we want you to focus on. Mm -hmm. So autonomy as in, we don't get to necessarily pick the focuses, but we are told we can create solutions and we're trusted to create solutions for those goals and objectives. That to me is the perfect type of autonomy. When you have autonomy, that's just go off and build whatever you want. It creates chaos. Yep. And then eventually that chaos leads to me as a experienced team over here wants to do this thing and they want to do this thing and we're going to fight about it to find the right one. And then all of a sudden no one's doing anything. Yep. <laughs> so that's not the autonomy that I think works well. Right. It's definitely like having that directional. And that's why the VP or a design director or some kind of executive leadership um, was important to me and somebody that I knew would be awesome at it and somebody I knew I could talk to. How did you vet that in the interview process though? <laughs> it, it, you, you can't, you really have to go based off of gut. <laughs> really? I mean, yeah. was there, did they ever ask yeah. you to present feedback? I mean, is there anything that would help kind of give you a, a well, gut feeling? So 
I know at Podium, they, I remember Blake gave me like this vision card that the company cool. has and they hand them out. And that alone stood out to me ah, because I'm is. like, oh my gosh, they actually have goals and directions yeah. <laughs> and every team is working towards the same goal. Yeah. And then I've been a part of teams where it's like, what are we working towards? Oh, I don't know. And then you just kind of get stuck in a rut and everybody's doing their own thing and it makes it hard. <laughs> so those were the, the evidence pieces of yeah. that you were able to find and I said, that's mm-hmm. the autonomy that I'm yeah. looking for. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. I'm trying to think if I have any other really great examples, but I just, that one stuck out to me the most yeah. because they actually made it they operationalized their vision. They sent it out and was like, we're all on the same page. This is what we're focused on for this quarter. This is what the the overall vision is. And it's like, that's the kind of structure I want. Yeah. Yep, yep. <laughs> so I was sold at that moment. <laughs> what about the rest of the team? I mean, you were, how many people were in that interviewing process? Um, so it always varied, but I'm trying to think. It seemed to be, I would talk to at least two designers, a few interviews. I would talk to the whole team, which I didn't find that intimidating. I know some people might. By whole team, do you mean like 10 people? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It was like, but me, I wanted to meet all of them. Sure. Because I didn't want. Team was important to you. Yeah. Team was very important. I didn't want to not meet somebody and have, you know, that one person and me not get along or something, Um, which I don't know. I feel like I get along with everybody, sure. but like it, it was really important to know how that team worked together. Mm-hmm. Um, were they friends? Did they like not ever see each other? Do you, do they even know, like there was one team I know that they were just like, Oh, that person's a, a designer here. And it's like, Oh, you guys aren't that close of a knit group. huh? So yeah, yeah like some of them were like remote teams and that was something I quickly was like, I, I don't want to do that. I don't really want wanted the close knit yep. team. Yep. So it was when I, when I would talk to people, they're like, Oh yeah, that was one of the questions I started to ask. I learned that after a couple of times they're like, Oh yeah, we're a remote team. And I'm like, Oh, I could do remote. I've done remote in the past, but I didn't really want to do it again at that moment in time. Yep. <laughs> so, cause like it, at my last place, <laughs> um, we were very like, we went to lunch every day, not every day, every other day it felt like, yep. and we were just, you know, like family was our motto. Yep. <laughs> So it was very close knit and I loved that and I wanted it so bad. You know, it's funny, again, going back to how you need to identify what's important to you, because for some people Mm -hmm. having the remote opportunities probably means the world. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And so for some people, that is a huge draw Mm -hmm. for you learning through your experiences. You recognize that's not what you wanted. Yeah. It goes back again to identifying what it is that you're looking for and then searching that out for yourself as opposed to just taking the first thing that comes your way. And I know I know there were a couple like a couple of my friends that have been like they felt that pressure when mm-hmm. they had to take something like like apparently there's this imploding offer style that recruitment does now where they, what does that mean? they send an offer and it lasts like 24 hours oh yeah we yeah. need a decision by yeah in the next 48 yeah. hours so a lot of them feel that pressure based off of that and i'm like oh this hurts my soul to see you like have to be tormented about, do I let that offer implode? Do God, I talk to them? It's like, Oh, I, I've talked to some people internally at Domo and management where they say, we want, we're committing to somebody and we want to see them commit to us as yeah. well. So we want to see them go out on a limb, just like we're going out on a limb. And I go, mm-hmm. I know I get what you're saying, but it's such a high stress, high pressure yeah. situation that it is kind of unfair to put someone in the, we need 48 hours or this is gone. Mm-hmm. So if I come back in 50 hours, is it not there? It's just like, yeah, it's, it's like, what happens? Did it just go what away? What changed in those two hours? Yeah. Right. Well, I was, I, I had experienced some of that, but like, I kind of tried to manage it by telling people up front during the process. Like, I really want to have this decision made on this date. So they all kind of knew, like, I wanted to make a decision on this day. Mm -hmm. Act by this time. Yeah. So, and that's kind of how I was trying to manage it. And honestly, a lot of them were able to, when I just asked and said, hey, I just need a couple more days, Mm -hmm. they were really 
open and understanding about it. So it was it was really nice to be transparent. I was transparent with them. They were transparent with me. And we kind of just worked together for the most part. Um, And that's how I would work. say like you should probably handle those types of situations. It's and I know I've had I've heard of people like saying, oh, well, they just pulled the offer on me. And it's like, mm. Mm, that's just terrible. I guess it wasn't fate right. <laughs> at that point. So let me ask you real quick, because one of the things you haven't mentioned and what yeah. you were looking for, you haven't mentioned salary. You haven't mm-hmm. mentioned title. You haven't mentioned benefits. Yeah. And I think a lot of people start there. Yeah. I care most about my salary, my title, my benefits. What role did those three things? Play? Yeah. So I had, they were like in the back of my mind because I had this worry. I'm like, oh gosh, this is going to be an uphill battle <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> to get like all that the same as my previous job because yeah. you get you you get your budget in order and yep. it's like I have I have to make this much <laughs> to at least live right yep. so you're always worried about it and in the back of my head I'm like oh gosh I don't know I don't know I was super nervous about it but I didn't want it to be a factor in my decision right so it didn't I was really transparent with the recruiters when it came up and it wasn't really like an issue most people were like yeah okay and it was easy it was an easy process for me um to tell them what i was looking for and what i needed and i didn't have did any you feel issues like you were low balled or anything like do you feel like you ended up right where you wanted to be um i yeah i did end up where i wanted to be um which when I was doing the interview process a little bit, which I probably left out is I mentioned mentorship was mm-hmm. kind of important to me too. Yep. And I kind of would like indicate like, this is why, cause I feel like being a more senior role, like I can mentor people. And that was something that was really important to me is like giving back yeah. and knowledge. Yep. So maybe, maybe I did it without realizing I did it, sure. <laughs> but um, yeah. So I didn't really, did I get any low balls? I didn't really get any low ball offers. I think when we were having the discussion, it was such an open discussion that like the directors might say, well, we're usually in this range. And then it's like, well, we're really, I'm really looking to be in this range. And then we'd kind of negotiate a little bit, but in a very conversational way. (laughs) So I, I don't know. I didn't really negotiate too much. Um, I did a little bit and and uh, my my friend helped guide me through it. Mm-hmm. My old director helped me. Uh, he gave me some advice. I remember doing a small counter and I'm like, I called him up. And I'm like, I feel so slimy. <laughs> he, he literally goes, no, it's fine. Yeah. And, Cause like, I just was asking them to match another offer. Yep. And he's like, that's market. Yep. And you just like my, my husband's a terrible negotiator. That's what I learned from all this. <laughs> he's like, just take the job you want and don't risk it. And I'm like, yeah. but, but yeah. <laughs> so it was off. I won't take any advice from him, sure. <laughs> but yeah, my um previous design director was like no like you shouldn't feel bad about it it's it's something it's just the market and it's responding to it and i'm like yeah so i didn't really have that much issue with that part yeah i'm sure other people might have uh and might be able to speak to it better sure but i didn't really have that <laughs> sure well here's the last note i want to leave off yeah. on because you kind of said this right before we started recording mm-hmm. that at the end of the day things turned out better than yeah. you expected yeah and i think that's a, a positive note that even again through my experience i ended up where i needed to be and yeah. we're in a good situation now and you know i think getting laid off people again the scarlet mark of this sucks i'm never gonna be able to recover mm-hmm. from it speak to that just for a second if yeah you will. um so i did end up in a really great place um i was sad to leave the other place obviously but um i won't people always ask me they're like are you mad you left a job to go to another job that just let you go Mm -hmm. uh, a couple months later? And Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, like they couldn't see, like the person that hired me couldn't necessarily foresee that future. And honestly, I made some really great friends while I was there. And then I got to, it just took me to the next step of being where I am now with more amazing people. (laughs) So it's like everything happened for a reason. And if you think otherwise, it's, 
it's not going to be good, right? You just yep. have to have that perspective of it sucks in the moment. It sucks. But... Yeah. I'm going to pick myself up and I'm going to do something yep. about it. I'm going to con- change what I can control and that I could control. Yep. <laughs> I can control me, my attitude towards having a job and not having a job, even though I was a little like stressed out about it. Yep. <laughs> but like, it's kind of like, I approached it like I had a job that whole time because I was stressing out otherwise about money (laughs) and all that pressure. Like we had just bought a house and I'm like, no. (laughs) So I don't know. Just it's really about a state of mind. And especially if this had happened in New York, though, back where I'm from, I'd probably be a lot more stressed. Yeah, I bet. But Utah, so many opportunities. Opportunities and a good community. Yeah, great community. Like the importance of networking. Yep. Um, the interviews were was a great way to network. Yep. I've met so many people. I feel like I know everybody That's in the funny. valley now. Yep. <laughs> um, so you guys have all been awesome. <laughs> Cool. Yeah. And y'all, yeah, I just, I love everybody that I've met. Any plug for those who want to reach out and ask you more questions? Where can they find you at? Yeah. So I'm on Twitter. Okay. Uh, J, oh gosh, what's my handle? JR Reading. Okay. I think it is my handle. It'll be in the description. I tweet about Game of Thrones. Okay. I tweet with office gifts all Good. the time. Uh, not very much on design because okay. I love following designers that don't tweet about design. But if somebody wants to get a hold of you, that's But if someone wants you. to get a hold of me, I'm on there. Okay. Occasional design tweets. Um, I'm on the Product Hive Slack channel. Cool. Uh, that's probably the fastest way to okay. be honest. So, yeah. Cool. That's where I'm at. And uh, again, Hashtag podium. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate you yeah. coming on. Really appreciate your insights and uh, sharing your story with us. Thanks for having me. That's a wrap. Thanks for watching this episode of Design Today. And don't forget to check back next week as I've got new episodes that I roll out every Tuesday morning. Your support via shares, comments, likes, and subscribes go a long way in helping me gain exposure. And I really do appreciate it. Uh, A reminder that if you watch on YouTube, there is a podcast version available that is convenient uh, when you're sitting at your desk working. Or if you're a podcast listener, you can see me, my guests, and our smiling faces on the YouTube channel. In either case, just search Design Today and subscribe. If you're interested in sponsoring, collaborating, or feel like you've got a message that would be beneficial for the show, always feel free to reach out and connect.